The table saw is really the heart of the shop. You end up doing an awful lot of work on the table saw, cutting pieces to length, cutting them to width. First part of the table saw I want to talk about is the guard here over the blade. And the primary reason I want to talk about it first is I've got to get it out of here so you can see what's going on. So first, you've got a plastic blade guard that covers the blade, prevents you from getting your fingers in the way accidentally. This can be lifted out of the way. You have two anti-kickback pawls that are spring-loaded here. You notice these have some nasty looking teeth on them. Those are designed so that if the blade should grab it and try to kick back, those teeth will dig in and prevent that from happening. The third part is really this portion here right behind the blade. That's called a splitter. As you make your cut, that cut is called a saw kerf. The kerf will go, straddle this splitter, helping keep the board from pinching on the back side of the blade, thereby, again, helping reduce and prevent kickback. So I'm going to take the guard off now, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be working without any type of protection whatsoever. I'm going to install what is called a riving knife. Most of the newer saws now come with, actually all new saws now come with a riving knife, and it installs right behind the blade. The purpose of a riving knife is simply to keep the kerf open as you make a cut and to prevent the board from shifting toward the back of the blade where it can be lifted and kicked back toward you. So now that I've got the riving knife installed, you can see a lot better what I'll be doing here on the table saw, and I've still got a level of protection in place. So let's talk about what a table saw is and what you can do with it. Obviously, you've got the big table here. This one is cast iron. Sometimes the uh, wings here will be made of steel, but typically the center portion is almost always cast iron. Below that is a 10-inch circular saw blade. You can raise that blade with this crank in the front to cut through thicker and thinner materials, depending on how thick it is. And then on the side is a, another crank that allows you to tilt your blade. And you can tilt it up to 45 degrees. Then there are also stops here at 0 and 45. So once you tilt it, you can easily bring it back to a perfect vertical position. Two primary jobs of a table saw are cutting pieces to width and to length. Cutting a piece to length, taking something off the end, this is called cross-cutting, cutting across the grain. The other function is ripping. For ripping, you're cutting with the grain. And let me note, you never make a cut freehand on the table saw. Every cut you make on the table saw has to be guided by one of two things. Either the miter gauge for a cross-cut, or in the case of a rip cut, you bring the rip fence over, lock it in place, and the piece rides against the rip fence as you make your cut to width. To cross cut a piece, mark the leading edge at the desired length. Transfer the mark down the edge of the board so you can align it with the blade. Set the blade height about one quarter inch higher than the thickness of the workpiece. Next, I add an extension to the miter gauge. This gives me a cleaner cut by preventing chip out on the back edge. It also helps push the cutoff past the blade. Align the mark with the edge of a tooth, then make the cut. After making the cut, let the blade come to a complete stop before retrieving the pieces. To make an angled cross cut, called a miter, simply pivot the miter gauge head to the desired angle and tighten the handle to hold it in place. Then move the workpiece past the blade just like with a regular cross cut. For a rip cut, set the rip fence to the desired width and lock it in place by pressing down on the handle. Have a push stick handy to keep your hands safely away from the blade during the cut. 
push the board straight forward, keeping it pressed against the fence. When ripping long pieces, position an outfeed support to help keep the piece from lifting off the table at the end of the cut. The support should be just below the table height so the workpiece doesn't bump into it. So we've seen the basics of how to make a cross cut using the miter gauge and how to make rip cuts using the rip fence. There is another basic to know about the table saw and that is that you never use the miter gauge and the rip fence together to make a through cut. Here's the reason why. If you've made your cut and the cutoff is sitting here while the blade is spinning, it's trapped between the rip fence and the blade. And the blade, as, as it gets toward the back, that blade can catch it, lift the back side, and throw it back at you. And the top portion of this blade is spinning at over 120 miles an hour. This will kick back faster than you have time to realize what's happening. A very dangerous situation. So never use the miter gauge and the rip fence together to make a cross cut. But here's a little trick that lets you do something very similar without any danger. Get a piece of scrap about one inch thick and clamp it to your rip fence ahead of the blade. Let's say I want to cut a piece that's three inches long. Since I've made my rip fence essentially one inch fatter, I'm going to set my gauge, my, I'm going to set my scale here to four inches instead of three. I'm going to install my riving knife again, and plug the saw in, I'll make the cut. Now to make the cut, I simply push my work piece up against the block here. Now, even though the blade is spinning down, there's room for that piece to be nudged to the side just a little bit. And with the riving knife in place, even if it was behind the blade, the riving knife will prevent it from getting into those back teeth that are rising toward me. So use this little block technique and you can cut pieces to exact same length over and over again.